www.ebitmoneyinvestmentsmartcap.com. Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the August 1st, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right, I got a slightly mixed bag out here. That mix comes from the S&P off four points. The New York Stock Exchange down 33. The Wilshire off 23. Otherwise, you got the other markets. The upside Dow's up 32, one tenth of a percent. Nasdaq 123, about two tenths of a percent. Three tenths for the Russell. Six points out there. Three tenths for the semis. That's nine points to the upside. Trainers are basically flat out there. Gold's up six bucks. That's three tenths of a percent. Silver is up uh, eight tenths of a percent. That is 16 pennies. Lights recruit back nearly five percent. Off four dollars and forty-four cents. Natural gas is back nine pennies, and the thirty Treasury trade out at one forty-four seventeen. At seventeen ticks to the upside. Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside you've got Liberty Trip Advisor Holdings up fifty-five bucks, three hundred forty-three percent. AMTD Digital up thirty-two bucks, eight percent. Asbury Automotive Group up six percent, ten bucks. EPAM Systems up ten bucks or three percent. Boeing. Up about 11 bucks, 6.5% to the upside. To the downside is booking holdings off 42 bucks or 2%. Chipotle's down 14 or 9 tenths percent. Pioneer Natural Resources up 10, 4%. Aon PLC is up 8.70. That's 3% to the downside. So we've got some movers and we have some shakers out there. Let's uh, do this here. Let's go take a look at our NQ chart, see if we can figure out what might be going on. In a moment, we'll trade, we'll switch over to those screens. White uh, background uh, charts, multi-time frame set of charts. So we'll look for the NQ out here. So as we take a look at those sets of charts, the daily time frame, although I can't draw it in, there is an A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, the next price projection level uh, for the uh, NQ out here would be 12,382. So it's not shown on the screen out there, but that would be the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD. So that's the price target. The only thing getting well, it could get in the way of that would be some type of bearish reversal candle. If we got that at day's end, because we have an A to B equals CD, that's above the 1.272 expansion level, we would have a confirmed sell the D point. Five-hour chart is saying, yeah, I don't see anything just yet. Four-hour chart says the same thing. The two-hour chart is uh, potentially, by 2 p.m., could potentially confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. In the case of the 60-minute time frame chart, it has already done that. And price has taken on its first level of support. Now it would be the top of its profile. The price closes below this area, which is really where it's trading right now, around the 12,986 range. If price closes below that, then we're looking at a move likely to 12,831 to 12,876. 30-minute time frame chart out here has got what? Let me just make sure it's populated properly. It's got nothing. Um, Roach momentum indicator top on the 15-minute chart says if price closed below 12,960, look for 12,851 to be a, a target level out there. So 
We've got some short-term topping signals, no levels of support that have uh, failed just yet, but we'll want to certainly watch those throughout the day. We've got turning signals on the short-term time frame charts. That takes us up to the two-hour. 240, not so much, but we might get that. Now, the 240-minute chart, the bar that I'm currently in, completes at... Uh, also completes at 2 p.m. So you've got a little bearish shooting star, but it may be way too early. It is way too early to call. That's only 111 in the afternoon. We've got to wait for the next 40 mi 49 minutes to play out before we take a look back there. But I would look at that because if we're going to see a turn in the marketplace, then we will see it begin on the short-term time frame chart. So the short-term time frame charts, most of them, not all of them, have a topping pattern that is in place. Just now we're watching the support levels out there. So that's what's going on inside of the NQ. Can't imagine it's much different elsewhere. Let's take a quick peek, and we'll go take a look at the ES Mini, see if there's any other signals out here. This will take just a few moments. Now, it also has a daily A to B equals CD pattern that's underway. Price is uh, really targeting. It's trading near. It's trading near. It's 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD, which is at 41.19. Price is trading at 41 and a quarter. Next upside price target is 42.27. Again, that is short of some type of bearish reversal candle forming for the daily time frame. Intraday charts, nothing on the five hour. 240 minute has a TD9 count top. Two hour chart by two o'clock may confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. 60 minute has already done just that. 30 minute, not so much. And uh, so we have really similar patterns out here. I would say that the key level to be watching the ES Mini should be 4081. 4081 is the TD9 count breakout level for the 120 minute time frame chart. Now we're trading at 41 and a quarter out here right now. So that's, you know, another, uh, what is that? Uh, 20, about 40 points or so, give or take, out there to the uh, downside. But that would be the level of support. And if that level fails, then we're likely headed lower out there. In fact, that could also generate a bearish reversal candle. So we'll certainly want to watch that going throughout the day. Now, each of the equity future contracts, I'll just change screens here momentarily so you can see the patterns. Each of them have A to B equals CD patterns that are underway. And they're at various different levels. Again, here's the ES Mini upper left, 1, .2, 1 to 1.272 area. Same pretty much for the NQ. Well, same pretty much for the uh, Dow. And the uh, Russell 2000 is above it. Uh, it being 1876, likely its next target or destination is 1930. That's a 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD. Now, this is something I just noticed. wasn't here this morning, but it is now. And that is that a new daily profile is attempting to form an as below price for the Russell 2000. As long as price stays above 1851.66, and we won't have a confirmation on this uh, profile until this evening. But right now, let's assume that it does hold. That's a bullish indication. And that suggests that the Russell 2000 wants to head to higher ground, 1930. Now, the interesting thing here is if we take a look at, we took a look at the NQ and then the ES Mini. The reason why I was focused on the NQ is because truly it's the only one that is sitting at weekly resistance. Weekly resistance being the top of its weekly profile, 13001. Price closed above that on Friday. Well, that would be suggesting that we have a change in trend underway. So we're not there. It's just Monday. You know, we'll come back to that on Friday, uh, Friday morning. So I will need to record Friday's show between 8 and 9 in the morning. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll come take a look at Tesla uh, for one of our dinners. That's Rossi. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the uh, charts for Tesla up on our screen right now. That is for Rossi inside the Tiger's Den. Rossi went short at about 930 uh, bucks out here. So he's looking for some information uh, as to what the charts are telling us. So the very first thing that we should notice out here, Rossi, is uh, resistance. Where is resistance? So the weekly time frame, we can see that price is trading right into the top of that profile. That profile reading, uh, top of that profile is 903.56. We're trading right now at uh, 897 out there. So you'd certainly love to see that hold as resistance out there. If you see a close above that, it's a weekly close. So it really doesn't matter what it does on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, even though it might matter to you, it's not going to matter really until Friday. But right now you're off to a good start, and you'd like to see that resistance level hold. We don't have a resistance area that's up in this range here for either the monthly or the daily. So you want to really kind of keep yourself focused there. If price does close above that, what that suggests is that I'm looking at the monthly time frame chart and then the weekly is a run to either 969 or the 1092 level. So you're going to want to watch that uh, area, that nine, what did I say it was nine, uh, get it here momentarily, 90356 out there. If we look at the daily time frame chart, again, no pattern out here to identify a top. We'd have what looks like a bear shooting star candle that uh, might form today, but too early to make that call. If I look at the intraday charts, you've got a TD9 count pattern on 130. That says you're looking for an, the first area of support to fail would be around 873. Now, it's going to be less, you know, that's the oscillator and change line, but as price moves up and down, that number changes. So use that as a guideline. The price were to close below that, then you're looking for run 831, 808, or 786. You have a TD9 count on the 65-minute time frame. Price is sitting at support as we speak. If price closes below this level, we're trading at 894. If price closes below 894, that suggests you could see Tesla pull back to 835.30. That's where it would likely pull back to. That's the 65-minute TD9 count breakout level. The 30-minute chart has a TD9 count top. That says, with price right now below the top of its profile, a run for the 858.99 to 871 to 877 area is the uh, range where price will likely target. That's the 30-minute chart out there. That's all that I see inside of Tesla. So I do hope that helps you out. The daily support level would be around 809.07. That is its green oscillator unchanged line. If price pulls back, Tesla rejects that green oscillator unchanged line then it should be off to the races to the upside. 
So thanks so much for the request, Rossi. Do, again, hope that helps you out. Next question coming in from David H. in Tomball, Texas out there. And he wants to take a look at a Nico Eagle. So let's get those charts out here. I think I might have those up on the screen. Oh, Michelle, yeah, we do. Okay. Let's read David's question. It goes like this. Is a Nico Eagle in an A to B equal CD down on the monthly time frame chart? If so, what would uh, price need to do to negate the A to B equal CD down? And two, what are the support areas on the way down that could stop price from achieving the one to one A to B equal CD price target? If you have time, could we take a look at LNG, Chenier Energy? Yep, yeah, absolutely. So the question is, we're going to go change over because I can draw the A to B equals CD patterns on the other charts. So we're going to go over to the black background chart. What we'll do here is we'll get the Nico Eagle going. AEM is the ticker symbol. And the very first thing we're going to do is focus on David's question about the monthly time frame chart. So I'll simply expand this out. And in essence, what David is asking me to do is to draw an one is to draw an A to B equals C D pattern. So the first one that it would be drawn in there would be with the high out here from the trading week or month of September 2020. Then what I would use for a B point would be the low from March of 2021. The C point would be the retracement up to May of 2021. It was a 58% retracement. Uh, that typically leads to more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. But look how price kind of fanned out on the right side of the C to D leg out there. So it said it was really losing energy or steam. What price actually has done, and it did this last month, is it uh, tagged the one-to-one uh, -one area. Now, the one-to-one -one area is 39.93. Price got below that. Last month, price got down to a low of 38.02. What this does not have on a monthly basis is a uh, bullish reversal candle to confirm the buy the D point. But you were asking, um, so what needs to be done to negate the A to B equals CD pattern? Actually, nothing needs to be done to, to negate it. It needs to be confirmed. So on a monthly basis, you would be looking for a bullish reversal candle. Are we going to get that? Well, I don't know, um, but it is one possibility. Uh, if we go take a look at the weekly time frame chart out there, now it's possible that what uh, David was looking for was an A to B equals CD that looks like this. And I can't rule it out. Uh, it's, it would, the A point would be the same, but the B point would be all the way down at the lows from uh, January of 2022. And then the C point would be the retracement up into April the 1st. Well, that didn't work out real well. we got to try to draw that in there once again. Do what I'll do is, yeah, I just deleted both of them. Let's start here again. So this might be the A to B equals CD pattern that David is talking about, and that would get us down into the 2333 level out there. Now, from a monthly standpoint, the month of January had 49 million shares, and last month we did 82 million shares. So that is certainly in play. Both the A to B equals CD patterns are in play. But I like the first one that we looked at in the monthly base, and the reason I like that is because that actually confirms the weekly time frame chart. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it did confirm a buy the D point pattern. So the A point again being the high from September 2020, the low being the uh, March 2021, and then the uh, C point being the run up into May of 2021. There's your one to one level. What we can see here is you've got a bullish piercing candle. And so you do have a confirmed buy the D point on the weekly time frame. That might help out the uh, monthly uh, chart that we were looking at. The weekly chart, because we can see the A to B equals CD pattern here, what we can assume is that, in fact, the yeah, the daily time frame generated that same signal. And what we had here was a gap to the upside. That gap to the upside took place on July 28th. That would have confirmed an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. So to summarize, Nico Eagle, where do we want to go from here? Well, price is trained above the top of its daily profile. This is could be two consecutive sessions in a row for that. If that's the case, that is suggesting price wants to move higher. We confirmed that the weekly already has a buy the D point pattern. So what that then says is, uh, oh my goodness, well, we were on the white background charts that whole time. Were we on the white background charts that whole time? Give me a moment here. Sorry, folks. I thought it had changed over. So here's the black background charts. You've got the, uh, so here's the, here's the monthly. Uh, you'll see, uh, I, I got the larger A to B equals CD pattern out there. So let's put the, the smaller one, the original one. The original one, again, they're both in play out here. You got an A point up there on uh, September 
of uh, 2020. The B point is March of 2021. The C point is the week of May. This is the monthly chart, May of 2020. So you can see the one-to-one -one level at 39.93 was hit. And again, on the weekly time frame, if we open this up, you'll see that same one-to-one -one A to B equals city. You'll see the bullish reversal candle. That suggests that price should move higher. Now, higher to where? Now we want to go change over to the white background charts, and that's going to be that weekly oscillator and change line. That should become the uh, price target area. Why is that the price target area? Above the top of the daily profile, confirmed by the D-point pattern for it. The weekly time frame is confirmed by the D-point pattern. The monthly price pulled back to support, basically, which was near its breakout level at 35.12. So you should see Ignico Eagle. David, uh, trade up into around the 46.37 level. When we come back from this break, we'll go take a look at Chenier Energy. Ticker symbol there, LNG. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, U.S. equities uh, turned to the downside. The only one uh, trading in the uh, positive is the Russell. That is up uh, one point. Dow's off 58. S&P is down 15 as we uh, speak. So let's go to our next question. We'll really follow up from David, which was a take we get to uh, Chenier Energy. LNG is the ticker symbol. His specific question is, does this stock have enough strength to take out the highs? Well, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we're going to see here is a nice consolidation pattern. The first time up on the weekly chart, March of 2022, nice wide-ranging bar. Volume, 13.4 million. Next time price was up here, the week that began May 2nd, 13.6 million shares, same volume. Last week, price testing the top and rejecting the top of its consolidation, a test with 13.5 million. So, got the consolidation in place. The tops are being tested with similar type volumes out there. I guess the answer to that question is, David, uh, doesn't appear that it has that, that strength to do that. 
Uh, but price is above the top of its weekly profile, above the top of its monthly profile. So that is a, a positive out there. You'll see a new daily profile has formed. So your resistance level there is 148.61 and support being down at 138.61. So it doesn't look like from a volume perspective that it has the energy to push through um, the top of this. But, uh, you know, this is going to be tied to natural gas as well. And, uh and, and that is likely headed uh, higher. But it's dealing with resistance as well out there. So the charts are somewhat similar. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Again, that was David in Tomball, Texas. Our next question, the only one that I see that is in, is coming from uh, Coda, Insider Tiger's Den. Coda wants to take a look at the GDX. So let's punch up the GDX. Let's do that on the uh, white background screens. Let's go ahead and change over to them. If you give me a moment, we'll get those up here. And so with regard to the GDX, it says, please look at the GDX and XLI if you get a chance. We're going to do just that. So in the case of the GDX, here's what we know. We know that um, this is a tough call. Um, you don't have a bottoming pattern for the daily, the weekly, or the monthly time frame. Price right now is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Uh, it's a bullish structure daily profile. A close above 26 bucks is going to suggest that price should make a run for 27.34 to 27.61. You don't have a completed buy the D point pattern. That's the A to B equals CD to the downside inside the GDX. So even though you got a bullish reversal candle for the month of July, uh, it didn't complete any kind of a pattern out there. So that's kind of um, a dip, uh, difficult one. And on the monthly time frame, no bottom signal as well either there. So right now, now look, these patterns that you and I take a look at, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom, the CD9 count, uh, wave number seven, there is a wave seven pattern on the uh, daily time frame for the GDX. That's the only pattern that would be out there. Um, but these patterns that you and I take a look at are not present at every bottom. It's just when they are, or top, it's just when they are present, then we take uh, we pay attention to them because they are signaling to us some important information out here. But nonetheless, price may be targeting at twenty seven thirty four to twenty seven sixty one, and the close above twenty seven sixty one of the GDX suggests a further move higher. So hope that helps you out, uh, Coda. Your next request was to take a look at the uh, industrial sector XLI. So let's get that fired up on the uh, screen out here. Excuse me. So in the case of the industrial sector, today is going to complete a TD9 count top. Code, I don't know what today's high will end up being. The current high is uh, 96.04. Let's assume for our discussion that price does not take out that high. You should see a short-term top form. You can also see that oscillator and change line change colors two bars ago. Price and the oscillator and change line have a date with each other. Now, I don't know exactly where that's going to take place. It should be somewhere south of 95.44 and north of 90.95 out there. But we'll take things one step at a time. On a weekly time frame for the industrial sector, you've got a road momentum indicator bottom that's been triggered, but no bullish reversal candle. So therefore, I can't say it's a confirmed bottom out there. But with price above its offset and change line, if the if the TD9 count top fails on the daily time frame, Coda. The next level of resistance you'll see is 96.75. If price can clear that, then you're looking at around a 97.09 or 98.59. The monthly time frame actually does have a completed by the D point pattern. So that's interesting out here. Now that's going to look like this. This is drawing the A to B level out here. And then we can just move that line to the C to D level. So it's about there. We move that over. You'll see that was more than a one-to-one. -one. A to B equals CD. You got the bullish engulfing candle last month. So you do have a confirmed bottom on the monthly chart. So, but you've got that daily TD9 count top. Hey, sometimes these patterns fail, right? So watch today's high, whatever that is. If there's a close above that, still know that you've got resistance that needs to be taken out at 96.75 out there. So I hope that helps you out, Coda, with regard to the uh, industrial sector as well as the uh, GDX. Let's go to our first caller, and that is Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm great, Steve. How are you doing? Excellent. Nice to hear your voice. How's your summer going? It's going really well, uh, except I did have to put my little dog down after 17 years. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sorry to hear about that. That is the uh, second uh, canine 
that 17 years old that I've heard in the last two days out there. So I don't know if 17 is a magic number out there, but uh, my uh, condolences to you for that. Oh, well, that's okay. It's part of life. Huh? Yes, uh, yes, yes, it is. So you want uh, to take like an Akamai? Akamai? Yeah. Um, Go right ahead. I was, I, I was looking at it. And it looks like it might have uh, bottomed on a weekly chart, and it's got a. Uh, I've got a TD two up on a weekly chart, and uh, it, uh, if you go to days, it looks like it might have bottomed. I've got a TD three up there, and uh, the uh, Fibonacci. It's on the weeklies. Uh, it's above the twenty three point six, and got a ways to run for the three eight two and the fifty percent and the six one point eight. <laughs> okay, just want to get your thoughts on a on a swing trade, really. Okay, so let's do this here. So I've got the white background charts. We, we might just change over to the black ones in a moment. But if we take a look at the white background charts out there, we'll see a nice confirmed Roadsman to indicator bottom that formed on July the 15th out there. So that was your bottom signal. Uh, price was able to take out the uh, old profile. That was uh, took that out the high, the resistance level on July 21st. A new profile formed a few days later. That was on July 25th. Price right now is trading above the top of that profile. The top of that profile is measured out at 95.47. You closed above it on Friday. You'd love to see a second close today above that, and that would suggest a further move higher. Now, further move higher to where? That really takes us to the weekly time frame charts. So you, you had indicated that you saw some type of bottom pattern out there. I don't know that I've got one of those, but that, that doesn't matter. You've got one on the daily. That was very clear. I yeah, don't really have a signal on the monthly time on the weekly time frame chart that I'm looking at. But here's what we do know, price above its red oscillator and change line. Here's what we also know. For a series of weeks, price had been below its weekly profile. So your first level of resistance, we already talked about the daily time frame, which is where it's trading right now, the top of its profile, 9547. Turns out that the bottom of the weekly profile is also resistance. We can see that two weeks ago, price tested and rejected it. Last week did the same. By the way, that level out there is at uh, 96.69. 96.69. So that's the uh, that's the area where the battle is taken. If price can get above that, then you're looking to move to 99.64. 99.09 uh, is the bottom of its monthly profile. So let me step back for a moment. First thing you want to see is a close above the top of the daily profile. That's at the 95.47 95 level. If we get that, Jim, price should make a run to 96.69. If price get above that, we're looking at a run to 99.09. If price get above that, then we're looking at a run to 99.64. Now, we're about to go to break here, and I don't want to just leave you like that in case you have further questions. So stay on the line if you would, and we'll come back to Jim and Palm Harbor and discuss Akamai Technologies, A-K-A-M. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow off 80 points. The s and is down 19. NASDAQ 100 off 33. Let's go back to Jim in Palm Harbor. We're taking a look at Akamai Technologies, A-K-A-M is a ticker symbol. So, Jim, of the information I shared with you, do you have some further questions or anything else that I can assist with out there? Uh, well, uh, I just saw, you know, when you mentioned monthly, on the monthly, I showed a hammer candle for the month of July, and I... And it looks like it wants to go up, but it's only the first day of the month for August. So, but uh, and then if I drew a uh, FIBO line down to uh, the time to mark four down with that hammer candle, and if uh, it looks like to me that that was an indication of a bottom on the monthly, and it's, I don't know if it's a true hammer candle, but it looks like it. <laughs> so, if your candle looks like mine, which it should, but maybe you've got some other type of data feed. Um, it is not a hammer candle, but that's it. You know, if it looks like mine, uh, then the, the answer is no. And there, there's really two reasons for that, Jim. Uh, the first reason is that the wick of a hammer candle needs to be twice the size of the body of the candle itself. And so there's clearly that is not the case here. And then the second is there can only really be a very short upper shadow or upper wick to a hammer candle out there. So this just is that it is, it is not a bullish reversal candle on a monthly time frame out there. So again, if yours looks like mine, um, it, it acts technically speaking, it is not a it is not a hammer candle out there. What doesn't change um, our our view with regard to where prices trade in relation to its to uh, resistance, the top of that daily profile, and then where resistance is on the weekly profile, and then if price moves higher, where resistance is at, which is the bottom of the profile for the monthly time frame. Uh, is that what I'm sharing with you as far as a, a hammer candle versus not a hammer candle? Is that making sense to you? Yeah, that's why I said I wasn't sure if it's a true hammer candle. Uh, my my top wick is very short, but it, uh, the bottom one is not twice the length of the body. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It just okay. doesn't fit the well, classic definition of that. And, it, and right. here at TFNM, TF we don't change our definitions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a hammer, well, a hammer is a hammer. Uh, Thank yeah. very much. Hey, no problem, Jim. Always good to speak to you again. My apologies and sorry about uh, about your pet out there. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's blue skies from from this point forward for you. So we'll hopefully uh, speak to you again soon. You bet. That okay, was Jim. Thank you. You, you you bet. That was Jim in Palm Harbor. So I don't have any other questions at this moment here. So let's go take a look at gold. You mentioned that during the. Uh, uh, okay, we've got a couple out here for Intel. Let's go take a look at gold first anyways out here. See what Goldilocks is doing. So we take a look at that monthly or the daily time frame out there. Today is bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says we should expect and anticipate a short-term top for Goldilocks to form between today and Wednesday out there. Remember, the high of that pattern needs to form on bars eight, nine, the bar following nine. So, uh, you know, it looks like that is going to come to fruition. We just don't know which day is going to be the high of that pattern. Sometimes we can look at the intraday charts and make that determination. Well, on a five-hour time frame chart, we don't have any kind of topping pattern. 
On a four-hour time frame chart, we do not have a topping signal. On a uh, two-hour chart, you do have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. You've got the same in essence on the 60-minute, uh, nothing on the 30. I'm not going to worry too much about the 15 and the 10 out there. So what gold has a couple of short-term tops, it needs to break through support if that uh, is going to mean anything. Support would be between 1775.10 and 1779. So those would be the levels to be watching to the uh, downside out there. If there was another downside level, it would probably be 1762. So those would be areas of support, potential support for Goldilocks. Back to the next question that came in, which was a take look at Intel. So let's go back to our three time frame charts out there. INTC is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go see what's out with earnings on uh, Thursday or Friday. I can't recall which day. I do recall that it had gapped down or it traded lower. Uh, but uh, let's go. Yeah, so it did gap down out here. And uh, what it was doing was it was testing that prior swing point. That prior swing point was from July 5th. That swing point has volume of 33 million shares. And even though we got a test and rejection of that swing point on Friday, it was with 125 million shares. So not exactly the test and rejection that you're looking for. That suggests that we should see that candle tested again. Well, that's taking place today. Now, today's volume is 33 million shares. But again, that's going against 33 million shares from the trading day of um, of July 5th. So you still don't, it, it, volume, it's still too much volume to the downside for this to be a rejection of that swing point. It doesn't mean it can't reject it and move higher. You've got resistance at 37.85 and 38.51 on any move higher. If you look at the weekly time frame chart here for Intel, I don't have a bottom signal. And we can see that uh, today's move higher ran right into resistance. Coda, that was at its red oscillator and change line. So that's a level you'd certainly want to see price close above to suggest that there's some rally or counter trend movement, which could or should take price to the 4024 level. Nothing on the monthly time frame to show us a bottom, although price did pull back to its breakout level. And that breakout level was established at 3493. So I don't know that price got all the way down there. It was pretty close, uh, 3524. So price has pulled back there. But we've got no bottom signal. And in fact, we have a negated TD9 count bottom. So Intel is showing some trouble out there. Absolutely. Where's a price target to the uh, downside, if that were to be the question? So for that, what we would do is uh, switch back to my other screen out here, the black background screen. So if you give us a moment, we'll do that. We'll take a look at the longer term picture. That's the monthly time frame. The A to B equals CDs. What would we what would we draw in there? What what fits my eye is really I'm looking at what I'm looking at is the largest move higher as price was moving down. And that, for me, that sticks out as being the day or the week of uh, January of 2022, the week that began January 1st, 2022. So that becomes my C point. Now, for me to use that as a C point, I have to use that low as the B point as well, which I don't really like doing, but it's the only thing that visually that uh, visually uh, 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 fits, my, fits my eye out there. So here's the A to B equals CD pattern for Intel, which gets us down to about the 3409 area. So that's what I see when I take a look at Intel. Is it a bottom? Do I see some kind of bottom? You got wave number seven coda on the daily time frame. Uh, what you want to really see there is uh, a light volume test of that uh, test of that swing point. Let's go out to John in New York. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Okay. How are you? Excellent. Thanks for asking. DSL is uh, what you're calling about. Uh, tell the folks what you're doing, how I can best help you. Well, Diana, is this Diana good, shipping? Double line, income solutions, okay. Had, Go ahead. It had a good move this week. Yes. Uh, should I sell some or hold on? Okay, so great question. Here's here's what I can share with you. What chart are we looking at? The black one. So price above the top of the daily profile was bearish in structure. It's been above it for three days. That's a bullish signal. Price the top, above the top of the weekly profile. Did that last week. That was at 1250. That's a bullish signal out there. Don't have anything uh, that great to report on for the monthly time frame. So your question is, should you sell it? Well, the only reason to consider lightening up on it or uh, adjusting your stop would be the white time frame chart that shows that today is bar number eight of a TD nine count. That suggests that DSL should form a short-term top between today and Wednesday. 
Don't know which day that might be. It doesn't guarantee a short-term top. But do me a favor, John. Hold on through this break. We're going to go to it in about 10 seconds here. We'll come back and try to answer your question. I'll look at some short-term time frame charts for you as well. So we'll be back with John in New York to finish up uh, Double Line Income Solutions. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So, John, uh, when you enter this uh, trade, uh, can you give me a feel for what your trading plan was? Uh, I don't, I'm just trying to understand. Go ahead. It's just for the income. It pays a nice dividend, like 10%. Yeah. Okay. But was this to, when you entered, is this for a long term? I, I, I'm just trying to get a feel for yes. I'm retired, so I'm a long term uh, yeah. income. Well, here's what, I, here's what I can share with you. You know, here, here's what I would be concerned with if I were you. First of all, understanding what's inside this. And so we take a look at this. The top 10 holdings out here. So you've got debt from Brazil, debt from um, debt from Argentina, uh, more Brazilian debt out there. I, I just get comfortable with regard to the makeup of this uh, portfolio out here. The U.S. dollar index is going to continue to move higher. I know that it's pulling back today, but longer term, the U.S. dollar index is the flight to quality, and that should put pressure on these other, you know, it should create a bunch of sovereign debt defaults that are out there. 
And so, you know, that may roll into this specific holding. So you're dealing with a daily uh, TD9 count top that should form, should complete between today and Wednesday. So you want to consider that. I would say right now, and I look at short-term time frame charts, the only one with real signals are the 15-minute, the 30-minute, and the 130 minute chart. This suggests to me that price should pull back to test 1268. If price gets below 1268, then what we're likely looking at is a further move lower, and that could take it to 1218. So, but first, if 1268 holds, then you know this, uh, then the TD9 count likely hasn't topped just yet out there. Does that help you out? Yes, it does. Uh, Perfect. Do you have time for another question, or you you finished? Well, the show is over. But uh, I'll okay. certainly be here. To, I'll certainly be here tomorrow. If you want to send me an email, Steve at tfn.com, or give a call into the show. Happy to look at anything that you, that you'd like. Okay, John. Yes, thank you. You bet. That was John in New York. Have a great day, and that goes for everybody else out there. Stay tuned. You got two more great hours left. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home, and I'll be back with you on terrific Tuesday. You have a, a marvelous Monday, folks.